Hey guys, I'm David Mitchell, founder and CEO of Tradeway. What if God himself gave you a blueprint for how to handle your money? Well, the Bible is a practical book. Let's dive in and see what it has to say about wealth, about risk, about leverage, and about investing, and uncover how trading in the stock market can be a powerful tool for moving towards your biggest goals. We're so happy you're here. This is The Word on Investing. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us again today. If you've been enjoying this podcast, I want to encourage you to rate it, review it, and that's a great way to share that with other like-minded folks and help them find us. And you know what? We've been talking about three big financial fables that we've all heard from time to time. You know, we get it from, I don't know, sometimes parents, grandparents, sometimes business school professors. Sometimes we just hear it. Sometimes it's coming from Wall Street. Probably always it's coming from Wall Street. But the truth is these things are actually not true, but we've been conditioned to think that they are. So in the previous episode, for example, we just got through talking about the fable that one cannot possibly know opportune times to buy or sell a stock and the fact that that's a myth. The truth is the big boys on Wall Street do this every day and, you know, they get huge bonuses for that every January proving that they were successful. So, yes, you can find opportune times to get in and out of a stock. It doesn't mean you're telling the future. It just means you're using the probability math. We're going to show you how to do that just like the big boys do it. That's pretty amazing stuff. And today, I want to move into the third financial fable. And what that actually is, is this. You must diversify. Well, actually, we believe in diversification, but we don't believe in over-diversification. And that's usually what they mean when they want to talk about that. They want to put you in 400 different stocks and or mutual funds and bonds and all these different things. And... And diversification is biblical, but the Bible tells us to put our money in about eight big groups, maybe in a, with a few subdivisions, but not 400 different stocks. You might be surprised the Bible even mentions that, but it does. It mentions it in the book of Ecclesiastes. We may talk about that on another show. But it's fascinating that Wall Street always wants to over-diversify everything, and the problem with that is if, if you get into a hugely diversified portfolio, you might have five to seven or eight great securities that do great, and then 300 that are so-so, and then 100 that are awful, and they bring the return down so much that you make a really low return. So you're over-diversified. So that's kind of what we want to talk about today. It's interesting to um, see how that kind of fits in with the buy-and-hold mentality um, you know, they want to get your money and keep your money. They, they will often leave your money in all the way to the bottom of a bear market crash, which is totally unnecessary and should never be done, but they do it again and again. And then they justify it and defend it by saying, well, it'll always come back over time. Well, that's not too comforting if you're 70 years old or 65 years old, right? But, uh, cause it might not do it in your lifetime, but the point is it's not good for anybody to lose 20, 30, 50% of your total life savings because your financial advisor left your money in all the way to the bottom of a bear market crash. That never needs to happen. And if you get the proper skill sets and you learn those things from Tradeway, you'll know how to advise your financial advisor. How about that for a side benefit? Now, let me give you an interesting quote from Warren Buffett. Everybody knows who Warren Buffett is, right? I mean, he's probably the most knowledgeable investor of our time. He's one of the few billionaires on the Forbes 400 billionaire list who truly earned all of his money through investing. And, um, you know, not by selling things or building computers or software, but just by investing. And he said this, and I'm going to quote him. He said, diversification is something people do to protect themselves from their own stupidity. Warren Buffett said that. Now, it's interesting if you look at Buffett's history, like I've done, and he was at first in his younger years a follower of Graham's strategy of diversification, which was hyper-diversification. You never have more than 1% of your money in any one thing, things like that. Uh, and he followed that for a while, but in the end, he found that it was not really creating the kinds of return that he wanted. And he said, you know, it looked more like a zoo 
than a portfolio. And the reason he said that, obviously, is it had so many securities in it, he didn't know much about any of them. So later, Warren Buffett shifted to what is now known as the Munger-Fisher format. And um, Fisher was a medical doctor who became a stock trader and loved it so much. He did that full-time, wrote a great book on stock trading. But um, And I'm sure it influenced Warren Buffett, obviously. And so at that time, Buffett found a little bit better understanding of the fact that over-diversification is not the way to go. So he began to hold only as many securities as he felt he could understand that business really well. And that was a big change uh, from what Graham had taught. That was one of his mentors, but that was a big change. And there was another investor named Bernard Baruch, and he was an investor in the 20s and in the 30s. And he said this, one cannot possibly know all one needs to know about a great many issues. And he meant issues of stock. And so both of these men came to understand that you don't want to invest in more companies or entities or any kind of investments, then you can understand the business that those companies are doing and understand it well. So rather than owning 400 stocks um, or, or 250 stocks, it's better sometimes to own a few companies that you've studied and you understand well. Now, Buffett talks about John Maynard Keynes a little bit in some of his writings. He was a famous British economist. In fact, everyone that studies business studies Keynesian economics. I don't agree with Keynesian economics, but he was a great man. But one of the things about Keynes is uh, that that's a whole other story, isn't it, by the way? Why don't I agree with Keynesian economics? Maybe we'll do that one in the future. But he was a great stock trader, and he was known for the fact, Keynes was known for the fact that he was a good stock trader. And Warren Buffett said this about Keynes' style. He said he made the majority of his money in just a few different investments, which he understood well. So there's another man named Philip Fisher we just mentioned earlier. He was a legendary money manager and author uh, out from California, and he said this about diversification. Diversification was an idea that caught on, quote, because it was a simple enough theory for even stockbrokers to understand. Now, what's funny about these quotes as you read these from these billionaire investors is it's obvious that they're not impressed with the idea of that third financial fable that you must Diversify, especially if you mean by that over diversification, which is what Wall Street pretty well does with your money. They're not impressed with that at, at all. And so we see that our stockbrokers or our financial advisors are often also selling us products. They're not only looking after our best interests, they're also selling us products like mutual funds, like annuities, like life insurance. But worse than that, they sell us wrong philosophies. And sometimes they're just, they're, it's not that they're dishonest, they're just taught these philosophies by the company they work for. And that's what they teach their employees to believe. And yet, the billionaires that I look at and read the lives of these guys and in my own family for four generations, the millionaires who have traded never went by those philosophies of over diversifying. So it's really not the way to even have a hope of generational wealth creation. And that's one of the things we're talking about in these shows, of course. So now I want to, I want to say this before we move on. I am not implying that that all financial advisors and stockbrokers or that any of them that I know of are unethical or ignorant. It's just that they may be ignorant about certain things because they've never been extremely wealthy themselves and never actually traded that much. They've been taught what to say and do by the company they work for. So they're not unethical. They're trying to do their best, but you can learn a better way. You can learn how the big boys do these things and how they use probability math, they get the math on their side, how they don't over-diversify, they diversify properly. So anyway, these, these guys, your financial advisor, they provide a needed service, but mostly think about this. The need for their service is by the huge masses of people in America who don't understand anything about money, they don't understand anything about the world of finance, and they don't want to. Well, that's not you. 
I mean, you you may not understand everything you wish you did, but you do want to know about it or you wouldn't be listening. And so, so I'm sort of preaching to the choir here. You want to learn more. And what we advocate at Tradeway is that you learn to fly your own plane financially. I mean, have you ever gotten on a plane and right at the, as it's taken off, you think, I wonder what the pilot did last night. <laughs> and you wonder if he slept well, you wonder if he stayed up and drank all night. You know, you, you think about weird things like that. So if you had the skill sets and had practiced as much as he has, you'd probably rather fly it yourself. Now, you wouldn't want to do it if you didn't have the skill sets, though. But if you have the skill sets, you know, you, you're you more interested in your life than he is, right? So I'll promise you this. You're way more interested in your hard-earned money than your financial advisor is, even if he's perfectly ethical, So because it's your money. So it's great that you're you're starting to want to learn some of these things, and we're going to share with you just so much stuff that God has put on the shelf for his people, for you. And you're going to go, wow, I didn't know that existed. But just remember this, the ultimate responsibility for the well-being of your money and investments should rest in your hands, not someone else's. And I think the Lord would bear that out in scripture. We're, we're supposed to be the ones that are good stewards of our money. All right. So I want to remind you that you can go out to tradeway.com And there's a place out there where you can register for one of our live events. It's a two-day event called Step One, Start Your Journey. You can learn this great information right there in the comfort of your own home. They're fantastic. Listen, 98% of the people won't know anything about the stock market. Many of them have never owned their own business. So we start at ground zero. And by the end of the second day, you're going to know things that your financial advisor doesn't even know. And you'll actually go home with some strategies that have the potential to create more cash flow and also begin that journey of creating a family business where you share the skill sets with your kids, your grandkids, pass them down, give them a competitive edge in the marketplace, and you start to run a family trading business together. And that has the potential to create generational wealth. And so learning the skill sets is the first step. So that's what this is all about. Or you can go out to tradeway.com and sign up for a thing we call the Trade in 30 Days Challenge. And it's awesome. You can, you know, not only gain knowledge, but have some help along the way too. So it's fantastic. Check that out. So what we've seen today is the billionaires out there that are great investors, they're not really impressed with this idea of over-diversification that Wall Street seems to want to put on the middle class of America and putting you in 400 different things, you know, mutual funds and stocks and bonds and ETFs and make, having your money spread out so thinly that according to God's law of risk return, you're going to, by definition, have a smaller return because you took hardly any risk. And so, you know, there there's a, a right place to be on that. And I find it interesting You know, I mentioned earlier that the Bible even talks about this. In Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 1 and 2, and a few of the others after there, if you want to read it all later, it goes like this. Cast thy bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many days. Give a portion to seven and also to eight, for thou knowest not what evil shall be upon the earth. And there's a lot more interesting information in that passage, but I think the hippies kind of got it right. They called money bread, right? <laughs> well, that's maybe that's where they got it from Ecclesiastes. But the Bible is referring to money there. It's it's an allegory, but it's referring to money. And it says to put a portion in seven, also eight. So are seven or eight major areas that you would want to invest your money in because you don't know what evil might come. And that's God telling us the reason you diversify is because you don't know the future. You can't tell the future. So you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket, so to speak. And and so that's what the Lord says to do. But notice he doesn't say put it in 400 different investments. Now, it's interesting because you can go into the book of Isaiah and you actually find areas where it talks about almost every industry group that exists today. It's really fascinating to see that. But you can certainly find some subdivisions that you could put into to one or two of these seven or eight major divisions. But still, you can see God's method is not 400 things, right? It's it's fewer than that. So the point is, at Tradeway, we're going to teach you to diversify properly. We're not going to over-diversify, but neither are we going to under-diversify. And remember this, too. A lot of that has to do, in fact, most of that has to do with your longer-term buy-and-hold retirement money. We advocate that you take maybe 10 20% of your total money and trade with it with shorter-term trades. Why? 
because you take a little bit more risk with that money, and it's a small portion of your total money. You take a little bit more risk, and so remember, God put the law of risk-return trade-off in the universe, and basically it goes like this. If you take more risk, you have the potential to make a higher return. So you're safe because you're not using very much of your total money to trade with and because we're going to teach you the methods and the skill set so you know how to manage the risk and you know how to get the probability math on your side. So that's kind of where we're headed with all this. So, you know, I think it's great to to get a grasp of the fact that when they say you must diversify, they're usually talking about over-diversification, and that's not a great idea. Okay, so including the previous two episodes and today's episode, we've covered the three financial fables. You must buy and hold. It is impossible to know opportune times to buy or sell a stock, and you must diversify. And we've talked about all the reasons why those things are not necessarily true and how they actually inhibit your return on investment. Now, where I want to go Moving forward here is really interesting because it's kind of the main method that our family has developed over four generations for trading in the market, and I call it the three-legged trading table. We're going to talk about that next time, so I hope you'll join us. And remember, folks, if you want to dig in deep with the things we're talking about here on the podcast, I want to encourage you to get involved with Tradeway. We offer a wonderful education, and that's combined with a really great support system. And don't be intimidated by this. It's just skill sets. So we're going to walk you through one step at a time. You're going to start at ground zero, one step at a time, and we're going to also make it fun as we do it. You don't need any previous experience to get started whatsoever. The best way to get started is to go out to Tradeway.com and register for our next two-day event called Step 1, Start Your Journey. You can do it all online from home or by signing up for the next Trade in 30 Days Challenge. You can find information on both of these out at Tradeway.com. And don't forget to rate and review this podcast. It's a great way to share that with other like-minded folks and help them find us. We'll see you next time.